Hey guys, I hope you're all well. This is familiar to anybody who watched last week's video. This is our Toshiba Satellite C850 and it's not powering on. If you didn't see the first part of this video, please go back and watch. Actually, you know what? Don't even bother. I'll bring you right up to date. What's wrong with this is we have our 19 volt main power rail. We have our 3.3 volt and our 5 volts always on. Our power button is getting our 3.3 volts. When we press the power button, it's grounding that 3.3 volts and that signal is being sent to our Super I.O. chip. However, the laptop is just not powering on. So we need to take it from here and try and troubleshoot and see what's wrong. Well, one reason for it not powering on might be that it's seeing a short somewhere and it's just refusing to turn on for safety reasons. So I decided to focus in on the inductors. You might have seen I've done this on previous videos, but I wanted to focus in on the large inductors on the secondary power rails and just make sure that none of those were shorted. So you can probably see where I have the bits of text marked in, marked in on each of these. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the values I measured on these. So we're going to go and start over here and measure them counterclockwise. So right here, I did both a resistance check and a diode mode check on these. So in resistance mode, this inductor right here measured 400 kilo ohms, a little bit more than that actually. Uh, but it's certainly not shorted and in diode mode it was 0 0.5 volts. As we come around, we swing around to the top up here. There's another inductor here. I think this is to do with the memory. Uh, this measured 112 ohms in resistance mode and 0 0.04 volts in diode mode. Now, we're expecting a number that will be pretty low resistance to do with the processor. Um, so if you look here, this inductor right here I measured and it was resistance of 12 ohms and in diode mode it measured 0 0.005. So swinging around again, we have two more which look like they're going straight to the processor and they both measured 10 ohms in resistance mode which is what should be about expected and in diode mode they measured 0 0.004. That's the two of those there, they're two of the um, the V-core rails. Uh, down here, the next inductor down below, right here, measured a resistance of 20 ohms, and in diode mode it measured 0 0.008. And finally, the last couple down here at the bottom, these are on the outputs of this uh, 1225C chip. And I measured large resistances on both so there was 20 kilo ohms on this one and in diode mode it measured 1.32 volts I'm not sure what that is all about but it's certainly not shorted anyway and in resistance mode i measured uh 2.4 kilo ohms on this one and in diode mode 0 0.4 volts i also did a check around the usb ports because uh, there was just a little bit of wear and tear on them and i just made sure there was no shorts or any crossed wires on that so at this point I'd established that there really wasn't any obvious shorts on the board. So where to next? Well, the next thing I wanted to see was, was there any issue with the bias chips? Now, I'm saying chips plural here because there is, in fact, two of them. So if I scroll in down here, you will see that we have two bias chips down here. And if you look even closer, what do you see? Well, what you see is that they're actually two different BIOS chips as well. One is a 25Q1C VSIG, and the other is a 25Q32 BVSIG. So, anytime you normally see two BIOS chips, you know, one is there as a backup, but these are actually different. Um, so what I wanted to do on, uh, to start with was just to mark out the pins on each of these. You can see the dot on these indicating pin 1. So we marked out the pins 1 to 8 on all of them. And I found that there was 3.3 volts on this pin right here, which is the correct voltage for it. And on the second bias chip, I was also getting 3.3 volts on pin 8. That's the input 
pin for these BIOS chips and they should have 3.3 volts on them. So this is correct. So there's no issue with the chips not getting the correct voltage. The next question is, is there an issue with the program that they are meant to be running? These are meant to hold a, a piece of software and if they aren't functioning correctly this can stop the laptop from booting as well. So what I wanted to do next was see if I could work out why exactly, you know, why is there two chips on this? Particularly why is there two different BIOS chips on it? And then presumably if they're different then they have different software on them. So I'm now not just looking for one BIOS dump, I'm looking for two BIOS dumps and for them to be differentiated as to which BIOS chip each dump is for. So I'm going to do a bit of searching online and see if I can find the software for these. I do have a BIOS program which I'll, I'll show you as well. But I'm going to do a bit of searching and I'll come back in a minute. I googled for C850 BIOS and just to see if I can get a you know either one of the BIOS chips and I got this thread here on bad caps now bad caps as we all know is a magnificent resource but pretty quickly I found this thread so the thread is called need bias Toshiba C850 so now this is a you know it's not saying it's a C850 hyphen 19 Z but it's I'm gonna see if it's something close so I'm just looking at the board here he's put the the number on it I, didn't match this up but I can see that the number is slightly different so it's a C850B225 whereas mine is a B sorry C850-19Z but beggars can't be choosers so I was just going to persist and see if this one was the same so this user P-E-S-T-E Pesty uh, is that what you call him? Bad Caps Vet has suggested to make copies of original bias and then try this and if you click on this link he's got a an image of it here and as you can see it's not a great quality image on this but you can see we've got the two chips here right beside the chipset and it certainly looks similar to the motherboard that's in my C850 so if I scroll down here I click download from here and what I see is that it's a 25Q32BV and a 25Q 1.6 CV. So first of all he's got the two separate biases um, and we can also see that they're different because one is a 4 meg and the other is a 2 meg. So the thing is are these numbers the same as the numbers on my board? This is a picture of the two chips so of a Winbond 25Q2 sorry Q32BV 25Q32BV so that looks good and the second one is a 25Q16CV. So 25Q, I think they've made a mistake with that letter there. I think that should be 25Q16CV.bin. But these look like, you know, these are uh, bias files for these exact two chips. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my programmer. And I'm going to take this one here and load it up onto, whoop, don't do that. The 25Q32BV, I'm going to load it up onto this. I'm going to take the 25Q16CV and I'm going to load it up onto this and we'll see what happens then. On screen right now we have the CH341A USB BIOS programmer. So this is what I'm going to use to transfer the BIOS dumps that I got online onto the two BIOS chips that are on this laptop. So as you can see, I've taken out the first one of these. This is the 25Q16CV and I have soldered it onto this little board which plugs into the main programmer itself. So you need to make sure the pin on the chip here corresponds to the number one. Just uh, double check to make sure that these are making a good connection. And then what's really important here is you need to plug it in correctly into the USB programmer because it's very easy to make a mistake here. So what we're looking at is our little sort of legend right here. That tells me that if I have a 24XX it should connect to the top bank of eight pins. If I have a 25XX BIOS chip, it should connect to the bottom bank of four pins. So ours obviously is a 25Q. So I'm gonna mark out with a rectangle where we should be plugging it in. And I'm also gonna mark out the pinouts on it. You'll see that that is marked right here, pin number one up in the top left. So 
for our 2-5 Q, we're using the bottom bank of pins right here. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You need to be sure that these match up. Because what I found, and don't ask me how I know this, but if you turn these in upside down, it immediately starts to fry the chip. You, It will be boiling hot to the touch. And, you know, you can damage the chip in that way. So just be very careful. Plug this board in this way, you know, th with this um, orientation. And it should look then like this. And then there's a little arm to snap it in place. So I would give it again just a once over, make sure everything looks right. Plug it into the USB port. And then we go to our software, which is AS Programmer. With my USB programmer plugged into my PC, I now run this program. Uh, this is used to transfer the BIOS dump onto the actual BIOS chip itself. So the one I use is called AS Programmer. This is free to download. So what we want to do first is we want to make sure that the chip is soldered correctly onto the USB and that the USB device is being detected properly. And how we do that is we click on this. This is essentially like an auto detect here. So we click on that. And if it brings up a list of chips like this, we know that it's soldered correctly and the USB is plugged in and working correctly. So this is the one that's closest to what I have plugged in. My chip is a W25Q16CV. So this is the one right here. I double click on this and we now see that we have the chip right here. So uh, what I want to do first is what the guy suggested on the website. We want to read from that chip and then take a backup copy. So I'm going to read that right now. So even by the fact that it's detected there and it's successfully reading it, that tells me that the BIOS chip is correctly soldered onto the little daughter board for the CH341A. It's correctly mounted onto the USB programmer itself and the USB is correctly picking up my CH341A. If you have any of those steps you know, wrong, if it's not properly soldered on, or if you have the pins in upside down when it's the little daughter board is plugged into the CH341A, it will not read anything. But I've successfully read what is currently on that chip, and here it is right here. So as you'll see, it's not really legible to a human being. It's only legible to a computer, really. That doesn't make any difference. So what you can do there is you can now click on the Save button to save a copy of that. I've done that already, so all I need to do next is just to program this device. After taking our backup, we now need to find the BIOS dump for the 25Q16CV BIOS chip that we just took down from badcaps.net. So I have that saved to a folder, so I click open, and here's the file right here. That's it loaded into AS Programmer. So now we need to transfer it to our BIOS chip. So the way we do that is the program function right here. So this is the function to program the IC that basically transfers this BIOS dump onto our BIOS chip. However, just one thing on this, there's also an additional drop-down box here to unprotect, erase, program and verify. So this is a more comprehensive way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this right here and we're going to confirm that we want to erase the chip and reprogram it. So you can see there's a running log at the bottom. It tells you erasing and programming memory with verification. Now, while it's doing that, we can just have a small discussion about programming these. It is extremely important to verify these after you program them. Even on this video, in the previous example, I just hit the program button without the verification. When I did that, it went through the whole process seamlessly but when I went to verify, I found that there was a huge section of the BIOS chip that didn't match what was in the BIOS file. Um, I'm not sure why that happened, um, but this is one of these processes that you need to check and double check. Even after this finishes, I'm probably going to run another verify. I guess the reason is, I, number one, I want to make sure that the file is 100% onto it. Uh, and the second thing is really that it's a bit of hassle to take it back out if you think it hasn't been programmed properly. So verify 100% before 
you know, desoldering from our CH341A and putting back into our laptop. Okay, so that's perfect. So it's told me that it's done down here. And that is the first of our chips done. What I'm going to do next is, it's the same process for the second chip. So I'm going to desolder my W25Q16CV from the uh, CH341A. I'm then going to solder on the W25Q32BV. I'm going to program that with the second file and verify that obviously as well. And then I'm going to solder the two of these back onto the motherboard and see where we are from there. These are my two BIOS chips soldered back onto the board and my board is now back into the chassis of the laptop. I put in a RAM chip, I've connected my processor fan, I've connected my screen, the power and the power button is still connected of course. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press on the power button and we'll see what happens if I can dig it out here. So that's my power button, I'm pressing, we have lights and we have screen. If you can see it there. Okay, so it looks like we're back in business. So all we needed to do was to reprogram those two BIOS chips and that got us back in action. That's all I got for this week guys. That's the part two on our C850. Um, I hope it wasn't too painstaking. I wanted to take detailed notes on the CH341A because I don't use it that often and I want a reference video even for myself just on the pinouts and what issues that I have and just the best way of doing it so that I can so that I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. But that's that's it for what it is. I'm gonna try and get these done in one video in the future. But if you have any comments please leave them below. Please like and subscribe and I'll be back with something else, hopefully a little more interesting next week.